thank you, thank you very much for having me. Um, look forward to talking about the SpaceX um, Mars architecture. And what, what I really want to try to uh, achieve here is to make Mars seem possible, uh, make it seem as though it's something that we can do in our lifetimes, um, and that you can go. And and is there really a way that that anyone could go if they wanted to? I think that's that's really the important thing. So. I mean, first of all, why go anywhere, right? Um, the, I, I think th there, there are really two fundamental paths. History is going to bifurcate along two directions. One, one, one path is we stay on Earth forever, um, and then there will be some eventual extinction event. Um, I, I don't have an immediate doomsday prophecy, but there's, it's eventually history suggests there will be some, some doomsday event. Uh, the alternative is to become a space-faring civilization and a multi-planet species, which uh, I hope you would agree that is the right way to go. Yes? <laughs> That's what we want. Yeah. So how do we figure out how to how to take you to Mars um, and, and create a, a self-sustaining city, a, a city that um, is not merely an outpost but can become a planet in its own right um, and for us, thus we could become a truly multi-planet species. Uh, th th there are, you know, sometimes people wonder, well, what about other places in the solar system? Why, why Mars? Um, well, um, just to sort of put things into perspective, this is, this, is what, this is an actual scale of what the solar system looks like. So we're, we're currently in the, the third little rock from the left. Uh, that's Earth. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. The, and, and our goal is to go to the fourth rock on the left. Uh, that's Mars. Uh, but you can get a sense for the real scale of the solar system, how big the sun is, and Jupiter, um, Neptune, Saturn, Uranus, and then the little guys on, on the right are Pluto and friends. This, this sort of uh, helps see it not, not quite to scale, but it gives you a better sense for, for where things are. Uh, so our options for, for, going to, for, for becoming a multi-planet species within our solar system are, uh, are limited. Uh, we have, in terms of nearby options, we've got Venus, uh, but Venus is a high pressure, a su super high pressure, hot acid bath. Um, so that, that would be a tricky one. Uh, Venus is not at all like um, the, the, the goddess. This is not in no way similar to, to, to the actual goddess. Um, so it's really difficult to make things work on Venus. Uh, Mercury is also way too close to the sun. Um, we could go potentially on, the Mar one, of the, on the, one of the moons of Jupiter or Saturn, but those are quite far out, much further from the sun, a lot harder to get to. It really leaves us with one option if we want to become a multi-planet civilization, and that's, that's Mars. Um, we could conceivably go to our moon, um, and I certainly have nothing against going to the moon, but I think it's, it's challenging to create a, uh, a become multi-planetary on the moon because it's, it's much smaller than, than, than a planet. Uh, it doesn't have any atmosphere. It, it's not as resource rich as Mars. Um, it's got a 28 day day, whereas the Mars day is 24 and a half hours. Um, and it, in general, Mars is, is far better suited to ultimately scale up to be a self sustaining civilization. So, just to give some uh, comparison between the, uh, the, the, the two planets, um, that they're actually fairly, they're remarkably close in a lot of ways. In, in fact, um, we now believe that, that early Mars was a lot like Earth. And in fact, if we could warm Mars up, we would once again have a thick, a thick atmosphere and liquid oceans. So, but where, where things are right now, Mars is, Mars is about half again as far from the sun as, as Earth. Uh, so still decent sunlight. Um, it, it's a little cold, uh, but we can warm it up. Um, and this is, a, this is a simulation of the overall system.